Hi friends, hope you all are doing good. This is Lokesh Varan here. Today, it's going to be audio lesson. We are going to listen National Voluntary Guidelines in an audio format. The purpose of this audio version of National Voluntary Guidelines is to enable students to do the revision in audio mode during different times. Like before they go to bed, they can listen to this audio version and to do a quick revision. And before examination, many of our students you know, spend a lot of time for travel. And during those travel time, you can listen to this audio, but make sure you don't drive your bike or car and listen to this audio. So try to make sure you are in a safer mode and listen to this audio mode at all situation. And definitely it would be very useful for revision purpose. For students who wants to understand national voluntary guidelines, kindly refer to my previous video where I have explained all the nine guidelines in an easier way to understand. So for people who want to do the revision, they can listen to this audio version book and you know they'll be able to understand. Please share your feedback in the comment section. Thank you. National Voluntary Guidelines on Social Environmental and Economic Responsibilities of Business of Business. NVG National Voluntary Guidelines 2011 Principles and Core Elements. Principle number one. Business should conduct and govern themselves with ethics, transparency, and accountability. The principle recognizes that ethical conduct in all its functions and processes is the cornerstone of responsible business. The principle acknowledges that business decisions and actions, including those required to operationalize, the principles in these guidelines should be amenable to disclosure and be visible to relevant stakeholders. The principle emphasizes that the business should inform all relevant stakeholders of the operating risk and address and address the issues raised. The principle recognizes that the behavior, decision making styles, and actions of the leadership of the business establish the culture of integrity and ethics throughout the enterprise. Core elements number one. Business should develop governance structures, procedures, and practices that ensure ethical conduct at all levels and promote the adoption of this principle across its value chain. Point one. Business should develop governance structures, procedures, and practices that ensure ethical conduct at all levels and to promote the adoption of this principle across its value chain. Business should communicate transparently and assure access to information about the decision that impact relevant stakeholders. Business should communicate transparently and assure access to information about the decisions that impact relevant stakeholders. Business should not engage in practices that are abusive, corrupt, or anti competition. <coughs> Business should not engage in practices that are abusive, corrupt, or anti-competition. Business should truthfully discharge their responsibilities on financial and other mandatory disclosure. Business should report on the status of their adoption of these, these guidelines as suggested in the reporting framework in this document. Business should avoid complicity with the actions of any third party. Complicity with the actions of any third party that violates any of the principles contained in these guidelines. Principle number two. Business should provide goods and services that are safe and contribute to sustainability throughout their life cycle. Business should provide goods and services that, that are safe and contribute to sustainability throughout their life cycle. <coughs> the principle emphasizes that in order to <coughs> that in order to function effectively and profitably, the principle emphasizes that uh, in order to function effectively and profitably. Business should work to improve the quality of life of people. The principle recognizes that all seasons of product life cycle right from design to final disposal of the goods and services after use have an impact on the society and the environment. Responsible business therefore should engineer value in their goods and services by keeping in mind these impacts. Core elements. Business should assure safety and optimal resource use over the life cycle of the product from design to disposal and ensure that everyone connected with its design as producers, value chain members, customers and recyclers are aware of their responsibilities. Point two, business should raise the consumer awareness of their rights through education, product labeling, appropriate and helpful market communication, full details of contents and the composition and promotion of safe usage and disposal of their products and services. Promotion of safe usage and disposal of their products and services. Third point, in designing the product, business should ensure that the manufacturing process and technique required to produce it are resource efficient and sustainable. Point four, business should regularly review and improve upon the process of new technology development, deployment, and commercialization, incorporating social, ethical, and, <coughs> and environmental considerations.
business should recognize and respect the rights of people who may be owners of traditional knowledge and other forms of intellectual property business should respect the rights of people who may be owners of traditional knowledge and other forms of intellectual property business should recognize that over consumption results in unsustainable exploitation of our planet's resources and should therefore promote <coughs> sustainable consumption including recycling of resources principle number 3 business should promote the well-being of all employees business should promote the well-being of all employees the principle encompasses encompasses all policies and practices relating to dignity and well-being of all employees engaged within a business or in its value chain the principle encompasses all policies and practices relating to dignity and the well-being of employees engaged within a business or in its value chain the principle extends to all categories of employees engaged in activities contributing to the business within or outside of business and covers work performed by individuals including subcontracted and home based worker core elements business should respect the right to freedom of association participation collective bargaining and provide access to appropriate grievance grievance redressal mechanisms business should provide and maintain equal opportunities at the time of recruitment and also as well as during the course of employment irrespective of caste creed gender race religion disability or sexual orientation business should not use child labor forced labor or any form of involuntary labor paid or unpaid business should take cognizance of the work life balance of its employees especially that of work women business should take cognizance of the work life balance of its employees especially that of women <coughs> business should provide facilities for the well being of its employees including those with special needs they should ensure timely payment of fairly li- fair living wages to meet basic needs and economic security of the employees fifth point business should provide facilities for the well being of its employees including those with special needs they should ensure that uh, timely payment of fairly living fair living wages to meet basic needs and economic security of the employees business should provide a workplace environment that is safe hygienic humane and which upholds the dignity of employees business should communicate this provision to their employees and train them on a regular basis sir point 8 business should ensure continuous skill and competence upgrading of all employees by providing access to necessary learning opportunities on an equal and non discriminatory basis they should promote to employee moral and career development through enlightened human resource intervention sir business should create systems and practices to ensure harassment free workplace where employees feel safe and secure in discharging their responsibilities sir principle 4 business should respect the interest of and be responsive towards all stakeholders especially to those who are disadvantaged to vulnerable and marginalized principle number 4 business should respect the interest of and be responsive towards all stakeholders especially those who are disadvantaged vulnerable and marginalized <clears throat> this principle recognizes that business have a responsibility to think and act be beyond the interest of its shareholders to include all the stakeholders the principle while appreciating that all stakeholders are not equally influential or aware encourages business to proactively engage with and respond to those that are disadvantaged vulnerable and marginalized the principle while appreciating that all stakeholders are not equally influential or aware equally influential or aware encourages business to proactively engage with and respond to those that are disadvantaged vulnerable and marginalized encourages business to proactively engage and with and responds to respond to those that are disadvantaged vulnerable and marginalized core elements number 1 business should systematically identify the stakeholders understand their concerns define purpose and scope of engagement and commit to engaging with them business should systematically identify their stakeholders understand their concerns define purpose and scope of engagement commit to engaging with them and commit to engaging with them point 2 business should acknowledge assume responsibility and be transparent about the impact of their policies decisions product and services and associated operations on the stakeholders business should acknowledge assume responsibility and be transparent about the impact of their policies decisions product and services and associated operations on the stakeholders business should acknowledge assume responsibility and be transparent about the pol- impact of their policies decisions product and services and associated operations on the stakeholders business should give special attention to stakeholders in the area that are underdeveloped business should, business should give special special attention to the stakeholders in the areas that are underdeveloped business should resolve differences with the stakeholders in just and fair and equitable manner business should resolve differences with the stakeholders in a just and fair just a fair and equitable manner business should respect and promote human rights the principle recognizes that human rights are the codification and agreement of what it means to treat and thus 
with dignity and respect. Over the decades, there have evolved under the headings of civil, potent, political, economic, cultural, and social rights. This holistic and widely agreed nature of human rights offers a practical and legitimate framework for business leaders seeking to manage risks, seize business opportunities, and complete, compete in a responsible fashion. The principle imbibes its spread from the Constitution of India, which withdraws provision of fundamental rights and direct principle of state policy, enshrines the achievement of human rights for all its citizens. In addition, the principle is in consonance with the universal declaration of human rights, the formation of which India played an active role, core elements. The core elements for principle 5 and principle 6 are the same. Business should understand the human rights content of the constitution of India, national laws and policies and content of international bill of human rights. Business should appreciate that human rights are inherent, universal, indivisible and interdependent in nature. Business should integrate respect for human rights and management system in particular through assessing and managing human rights impact of operations and ensuring all individuals impacted by the business have access to grievance mechanism. Business should integrate respect for human rights in management system in particular through assessing and managing human rights impacts of operations and ensuring all individuals impacted by the business have access to grievance mechanism. Business should recognize and respect the human rights of all relevant stakeholders and groups within and beyond the workplace, including that of communities, consumers, and vulnerable and marginalized groups. Business should, within the sphere of influence, promote the awareness and realization of human rights across its value chain. Business should not be complicit with human rights abuses by a third party. Principle 6. Business should respect and protect, make efforts to restore the environment. The principle recognizes that environmental responsibility is a prerequisite for sustainable economic growth and well-being for the well-being of society. The principle emphasizes that environmental issues are interconnected at the local, regional, national, global levels, which makes it imperative for the business to address such issues such as global warming, biodiversity conservation, and climate change in the comprehensive and systematic manner. Quarterly, business should understand the human rights content of the Constitution of India, national laws, and policies and content of international bills of human rights. Business should appreciate that human rights are inherent, universal, indivisible, and interdependent in nature. Business should integrate respect for human rights in management system, in particular through assessing and managing human rights impact of operations and ensuring all individuals impacted by the business have access to grievance mechanism. Business should recognize and respect the human rights of the relevant stakeholders and groups within beyond this workplace, within and beyond the workplace, including the rough communities, consumers, vulnerable and marginalized groups. Business should, within the sphere of influence, promote the awareness and realization of human rights across the value chain. Business should not be complicit with human rights abuses by a third party. Principle 7. Business, when engaged in influencing public and regulatory policies, should do so in a responsible manner. Business, comma, when engaged in public and regulatory policies, should do so in a responsible manner. This principle recognizes that business operate within the specified legislative and policy frameworks prescribed by the government, which guide their growth and also provide for certain desirable restrictions and boundaries, which guide their growth and also provide for certain desirable restrictions and limitations. Desirable restrictions and boundaries, not limitations. The principle acknowledges that in a democratic setup, such legal frameworks are developed in a collaborative manner with the participation of all stakeholders, including businesses. The principle acknowledges that in a democratic setup, such legal frameworks are developed in a collaborative manner with the participation of all stakeholders, including businesses. The principle in that context recognize the right of business to engage with the government for redressal of a grievance or for influencing public policy and public opinion. The principle in that context recognize the right of business to engage with the government for redressal of grievance or for influencing public policy and public opinion. The principle emphasizes that policy advocacy must expand public good rather than diminish it or make it available to a select few. That policy advocacy must expand public good rather than diminish it or benefits or make it available to a select few. Core elements 1. Business while pursuing policy advocacy must ensure that their advocacy positions are consistent within the principles and core elements contained in these guidelines. Business while pursuing policy advocacy must ensure that advocacy positions are consistent with the principles and core elements contained in these guidelines. To the extent possible, business should utilize the Trade and Industry Chambers Association and other such collective platforms to undertake such policy advocacy. To the extent possible, business should utilize the Trade and Industry Chambers and Association 
and other such collective platforms to undertake such policy advocacy. Principle number eight, business should support inclusive growth and equitable development. Point one, the principle recognizes the challenges of the socio and the economic development, social and economic development phase to be India and builds upon the development agenda that has been articulated in the government policies and priorities. The principle recognizes the value of energy and enterprise of business and encourages them to innovate and contribute to overall development of the country, especially to that of the disadvantaged, vulnerable and marginalized sections of society. Third point, the principle also emphasizes the need for collaboration among business, government agencies and civil society. In furthering this development agenda, the principle reiterates Rate traits that business prosperity and inclusive growth and equitable development are interdependent. Core elements business should understand their impact on social economic development and respond through appropriate action to minimize the negative impact. Business should innovate and invest in product technologies and processes that promote the well-being of society. Business should make efforts to complement and support the development priorities at local and national level and assure appropriate resettlement and rehabilitation of communities who have been displaced owing to their business operations. Business operating in regions that are underdeveloped should be especially sensitive to local concerns. Principle nine: Business should engage with and provide value. Business should engage with and provide value to their customers and consumers in a responsible manner. Business should engage with and provide value to their customers and consumers in a responsible manner. First principle: This principle is based on the fact that the basic aim of business entity is to provide goods and services in a manner that creates value for both. This principle is based on the fact that the basic aim of business entity is to provide goods and services to its customer in a manner that creates value for both. The principle acknowledges that no business entity can exist in the absence of can exist or survive in the absence of its customers. The principle recognizes that the customers have the freedom of choice in selection and usage of goods and services that the enterprise will strive to make available goods and are safe, competitively priced, easily to use, and safe to dispose of for the benefit of their customers. The principle also recognizes that the business have an obligation to mitigate the long-term adverse impacts that excessive communication consumption may have on the overall well-being of individual society and our planet. And our planet. Core elements. Business. First point. Business while serving the needs of the customer should take into account the overall well-being of the customers and that of the society. Business should ensure that they do not restrict the freedom of choice and free competition in any manner while designing, promoting and selling their products. Third point, business should disclose all information truthfully and factually through labeling and other means including the risk to the individual, to the society and to the planet from the use of the product so that the customers can exercise their freedom to consume in a responsible manner. Where required, business should also educate their customers on the safe and responsible usage of the products and services. Business should promote and advertise their products in ways that do not mislead or confuse the consumers or violate any of the principles in these guidelines. Business should exercise due care and caution while providing goods and services that result in over-exploitation of natural resources or lead to excessive conspicuous consumption. Business should provide adequate grievance handling mechanisms to address customer concerns and feedback. Okay, these are all the nine principles. Guidance on implementation of principles and core elements. Successful implementation of the principles and core elements require that all of them need to be integrated and embedded in the core business process of an enterprise. This requires specifically that the following actions are taken. Leadership, layer, leadership innovation, in leadership integration, engagement reporting, leadership integration, engagement reporting, leadership, the chairman, CEO, manager, who the manager should play a proactive role in convincing the board, top management and staff within this business that adopting these principles is crucial for success. The board and senior management need to ensure that the principles are fully understood across the organization and comprehensively executed. The board and senior management need to ensure that the principles are fully understood across the organization and comprehensively executed. Integration. These principles and core elements must be embedded in the business policies and strategies emanating from the core business process. Purpose of the organization for this to happen, these must align with each business internal values and or must provide clear business benefits. Engagement, building strong relationship and engaging with stakeholders on a consistent continuous basis is crucial. Reporting, implementation, reporting. Implementation process includes disclosure by companies of their impact on society, on environment to their stakeholders. Business responsibility reports suggested framework. Part A, Part B, Part C. Part A of the report include basic information data about the operations of the business entity so that the reading of the report becomes more contextual and comparable in other, with other similarly placed business. Part B of the report incorporates the basic parameters on which the business may report their performance. Efforts have been made to keep the report simple, keeping in view the fact that this framework is equally applicable to small business as well. Efforts have been made to keep the reporting sim keeping Reporting simple, keeping in view the fact that this framework is equally applicable to the small business as well. The report may be prepared in a free format with the basic performance indicators being included in the same. 
the report may be prepared in a free format with the basic performance indicators being included in the same. In case the business entity has chosen not to adopt a report on any of the principles, the same may be under started and stated along with it. If possible, the reasons for not doing so. Part C of the report incorporates two important aspects of business responsibility reporting. C1 is a disclosure on by the business entity on any negative consequences on of its operations on the social, environmental, and the economic fronts. Negative consequences of its operations on the social, environmental, and economic fronts. The objective is to encourage the business to report on this aspect in a transparent manner so that it can channelize its efforts to mitigate the same. So that it can channelize its efforts to mitigate the same. Part C2 is aimed at encouraging the business to continue to improve its performance in the area of business responsibility. Those are the business responsibility reports suggested framework.